let's talk about this giant, giant comet. Don't panic! <laughs> but a giant comet, gigantic comet, this thing is absolutely huge. While scanning older data from a telescopic survey of the sky, astronomers discovered a very interesting object. It's called 2014 UN 271. It's a giant chunk of ice and rock uh, that normally speeds uh, spends its time far, far out past Neptune. But it's now heading into the solar system and will get as close to the sun as Saturn over the next 10 years. To be clear, a lot of new comets we find dipped pretty close to the sun after spending millennia out there in the black, but this one is different for quite a few reasons. One is how ridiculously elongated its orbit is. It goes from about 1.6 billion kilometers around the sun, just outside Saturn's orbit, to a mind-numbing 2 trillion kilometers out. That's a fifth of a light year. From a distance of the sun's gravity is so weak, a whisper could push this thing into interstellar space. Another is its size. A, a big comet might be 50 kilometers wide, the size of the famous Hale-Bopp comet, which visited the inner solar system in the 1990s. I remember that, actually. Uh, this one may be, and I'm still reeling from this, a staggering 200 kilometers wide. 200. This thing is huge. And here is uh, an image of its very elongated orbit. Uh, let's see, 2014 UN 271 was found in data from a dark energy survey, an enormous project to map out one eighth of the entire sky over several years. The uh, main mission of the survey is to map out hundreds of millions of galaxies and thousands of supernovae to understand uh, better the shape, size and expansion of the universe. However, it can see some things significantly closer to home, like solar system bodies. These move very slowly from one night to the next, and software can be written to look at these images taken at different times to search for moving objects. The first known image of 2014 UN 271 was in 2014, aptly named, uh, so it was back named to that date. The discovery was announced on June 19th, 2021, and even since then, the orbit has been updated a few times. I'm using the latest numbers from the JPL Minor Planet database here, but generally speaking, the orbit is very long and the object very big. Pedro Bernard Bernardinelli, one of the astronomers on the team, posted this image of it combining uh, of several images taken over the years. Let's uh, take a peek at this. And look at that beauty, <laughs> beauty of a picture. <laughs> the object showed no coma, in any of the five band DES images between 2014 and 2018, when it moved from 29 to 23 AU, um, the residuals of the scene moduling photo, uh, photometry of the objects shows consistency with noise, both in each image and in a st stack of all 30 something images we have. I guess it's just a bunch of, a bunch of data there. Uh, where was I? Okay, so UN-271 is what we call a trans-Neptunian object, or TNO. This is a class of objects that orbit the sun out past Neptune, and come in a variety of shapes, sizes, orbits, and so on. Some are quite big. Pluto is technically the largest we know of, at about 2,400 kilometers wide, the distance from Denver to Washington, D.C., Many found are in the 100 to 1,000 kilometers range. But these objects are far away. We've only found a handful of trillions of them that are out there. And this is more from its elongated orbit. Just more pulled back, I guess. Let's see. UN-271 spends most of its 600,000 year or so orbit hundreds of billions of kilometers around the sun. And the only reason it is found at all is because it's only about 3 billion kilometers away from us right now, roughly the distance of Neptune from the sun. That's how its size was found as well. For a given brightness, we see at Earth, a shiny object is smaller and darker one bigger. Um, if we assume it reflects 4% of the sunlight hitting it, reasonable since it's a decent average of TN for TNOs, it's 200 kilometers wide. 
but it might be darker and bigger or more reflective and smaller. We'll know more and we'll know better in the next few years. We don't know what this object is made of exactly, but given what we know of TNOs, it's likely a mix of water, ice, and rock, plus other frozen things like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen, and the like. It's too small to be round, its gravity too weak to crush itself into a sphere, a sphere, and the smallest known object like it in the solar system is Saturn's moon Mimas at 400 kilometers wide. So it's very likely a regular shape. And then this is an actually a, a great different, uh, so we got Mars, which is actually rather small. Ganymede, Titan, Mercury, and then it just goes all the way down. Here's, where's our moon? Here's our moon, the moon, it's, its actual name. Uh, so you can see kind of the comparison in size uh, to all the different moons that are out there in our solar system. Let's see if I can see UN... Do they have the 270? I don't think they have it here. It might be in, in this spot here somewhere. So it's uh, more more like a really brooding Nigerian comet than a teeny planet, which makes me wonder, will it act like a comet? I mean, will we see activity from it as it nears the sun with ice turning into gases so that it develops a fuzzy head and long tail? It might, since we've seen activity from other objects that get close as well uh, as this one will. Given its size, if it does start to get busy, it might get much brighter. Without activity, it should get to about a magnitude of 18 at closest approach, which is still one one hundred thousandths as bright as the faintest star you can see by eye. It'll take big telescopes to see it, but if it get active, well, we'll see. <laughs> because we'll be able to see it ah. <laughs> and I wonder it makes the it makes its closest approach in early 2031 that's soon but perhaps enough time to get a probe together to send to it the European Space Agency is building a mission called Comet Interceptor that is specifically designed to look for comets coming from deep space that are on their first inbound trip to the inner solar system like Comet uh, Borisov from 2019, also uh, Amuamua. This one has dipped down many times over the past few billion years, but I wonder if ESA will make an exception for it. We've never had a chance to see anything like this close up before. Some moons of outer planets look like captured TNOs, but they've certainly alter, uh, been altered over the eons by their host planet and proximity to the sun. Seeing a new TNO this size up close and for an extended visit would be extraordinary. I expect we'll get lots of images of it soon. At the moment, unfortunately, Hubble is offline because of a computer error, which I actually talked about uh, last week sometime. Uh, so hopefully the bigger ground-based scopes can get a look. Uh, they'll be just dots, even when it gets closer over the next decade. Uh, but there's a lot we can learn from a dot. Stay tuned. And, you know, we have the James Webb Telescope that's supposed to be up by the end of the year. They are saying October. Uh, this thing was supposed to be up in 2015. But uh, barring no uh, discrepancies in the plan, it should be up by the end of the year, which is, man, head over heels better than Hubble. So we're going to get some incredible images of space uh, coming 2022, which I'm very excited about. Um, so we'll, um, I mean, you, you know, I'm going to be talking about space, uh, when that James Webb telescope gets up there, uh, I'm going to be very excited to see what happens and what we see from it. And I'm very excited to see what they see from this because it's supposed to get closest to us, uh, in 2031, which means we've got some time to both get to it and see it as it approaches. So if it does start uh, getting a tail and getting fuzzy from, you know, maybe melting from the sun as it gets closer, maybe we will be able to see it. Um, you can see Saturn with the naked eye uh, on a good solid clear night. Um, so I guess we shall see, won't we?